At this time, I am uh, pleased to introduce Cardinals Chairman, Mr. Bill, Witt, Bill DeWitt Jr. for a special announcement on behalf of the St. Louis Cardinals. Bill. Thanks, Brian. I'm pleased to announce that Ali Marmol will be the 51st Cardinals manager. As you know, Ali has spent his entire career in the Cardinals organization as a player, manager, coach, and three years as our major league bench coach. He has excellent working relationships with players, coaches, and staff at all levels of the organization. We believe Ali possesses strong managerial skills that will allow for the Cardinals success to continue well into the future. So Brian, I'll turn it back to you. Okay, thank you, Bill. Joining uh, us today, of course, Bill, who you just heard from and uh, Cardinals president of baseball operations, John Mozalock, and vice president general manager, Michael Gersh. And then our special announcement, uh, which uh, Bill just made, uh, the newest manager of the St. Louis Cardinals, Oliver Ali Marmol. Now we'll turn it over to Cardinals president of baseball operations, John Mozalock. Good morning, exciting day for the St. Louis Cardinals. As we sit here today, like many of you, I did not think we'd be introducing a new manager for the 2022 season, but here we are. Perhaps the simplest question is, why Ali Marmol? So let me try to answer that. Ali understands what we've been trying to do, what we need to do, and what we want to do in the future. Ali has a long history of being part of the St. Louis Ar Cardinals organization. Drafted by the Cardinals in 2007, coaching and managing in the minor leagues, first base coach and bench coach at the major leagues. He has learned from so many talented baseball people. He, is, he has excellent relationships throughout our entire organization. He is interested in both traditional baseball values as well as the modern tools that are available today. Now, many of you are still confused on why we are here in the first place. Perhaps our explanation on this was a bit vague, but it had to be made. So let me give you some details behind this. We had internal issues we felt we could not resolve. We felt the best path forward was to make a change for the organization, regardless if it was not a popular one. We did not take this lightly. As you can imagine, we gave this deep reflection and thought. But in the end, we had to make a change. Today is about Ollie. Our entire organization is excited about him getting this opportunity and being named the 51st manager of the St. Louis Cardinals. Ollie will bring his own voice to this position, and we look forward to all of us taking this team to the next level. So thank you. At this time, pleased to announce and introduce Oliver Ali Marmol for some remarks regarding today's announcement. Appreciate it, Brian. Thank you. Um, this is an exciting day. I'm, uh, I'm honored to sit here and just uh, hear you guys speak and present this opportunity to me and, and my family. I'd like to uh, take a moment and just uh, thank the DeWitt family. Um, this past week, just being able to to speak with Bill and uh, it's evident that this organization franchise is absolutely dear to his heart and his family's heart. And uh, they've built a winning tradition and a rich history here that is absolutely remarkable. Um, for them to trust me to be a caretaker of that is incredibly humbling. So thank you for that. Um, I'd also like to thank Mo and Gersh um, for your continued trust. Um, you guys have invested time in me and I'm appreciative of that. Um, being able to strategize with you on how to build upon the success that this organization has had and how to move it forward um, gives me, it just energizes me, it really does. And uh, I look forward to doing that alongside both of you. So thank you. Um, I'd also like to take a minute to thank some of the mentors that I've had within this organization that have made this opportunity possible. And uh, that being Gary LaRock, Mark DeJohn and Mike Schilt. Um, the three of them have invested heavily not only in their time and energy, but also their wisdom and have allowed me to be equipped with this opportunity and are supportive of uh, the opportunity that's at hand now. So 
I'd like to take a minute and just thank them and I'll continue to build upon what I've learned from them in order to move this forward, so thank you. Um, I'd also like to take a minute to thank my family. Uh, my parents, my brothers, the sacrifices that have taken place early on in order for, for this to be real um, are numerous and, uh, and I'm thankful for that. And last but not least, uh, more important than, than anybody I've named, my wife. Um, she's an absolute stud. And uh, it's, uh, it's extremely difficult to be a wife of a player coming up through the minor leagues and, and, and getting to the big leagues. It's, it's near insanity to be a wife of a, of a coach coming up through the system. And some of the sacrifices and stories are, are great, um, but I'm appreciative of her support. Um, so thank you. Um, and then lastly, but not many people get to manage. Um, Definitely uh, not for an organization like this. It, it's one thing to manage, it's another thing to manage for one of the most historic organizations, not only in all of baseball, but all of sports. And uh, I'm truly looking forward to the accountability that comes with that and the responsibility, responsibility of leading uh, this staff and players to another championship. So thank you. Thank you, Ali, and congratulations. At this time, we'll open up to a question and answer portion of the program. Again, a reminder, use your raise hand function, and we'll start with Jim Hayes of Valley's Midwest. Hi, Ollie. Um, congratulations, sir. Appreciate it, Jim. Um, my question is, you know, you mentioned some of the people that were your mentors. Obviously, Shilty was one of them. Um, I know you guys were close. Um, what things do you take away from him uh, in terms of your approach or what will be your approach and how do you think you might be a little different from uh, the way Schulte um, was, was trying to direct the team? Uh, sure. Um, I, I take a lot from him. Um, he invested heavily and put his name on me when I was in the minor leagues as a staff member. Um, and what I'll take away from him is his attention to detail. I mean, I think it's, it's evident we've all noticed um, the improvements in certain areas of how we play the game. And that comes with, he made it important to himself, to the staff, which makes it important to the players. And, and you saw a lot of that cleaned up. So I, I take a lot of that from, from Schulte. Um, his attention to detail was, was great. Um, when you asked me how we do things different, for me, it's, um, it's not so much different, Jim, as much as how do we build upon the success that this organization has had? Because we've won here, okay? And it's more so building upon that. And for me, that, that comes with a heavy emphasis on integrating departments. Um, there's just so much information at hand and being collaborative, not only with the front office, but with baseball development, with the performance department, um, with the analytic department, there's just so much that we can tap into that will allow us to move this forward in a way that uh, I'm truly energized to do. Thank you. And again, congrats, sir. Thank you. We'll now go to Frank Cusimano, case to case St. Louis. Ali, congratulations on the job. At what age did you kind of know that this was going to be your profession? I know you were drafted by the Cardinals and developed by the Cardinals, but there probably had to have been a point where you knew that I'm not going to make it as a player. I know I want to do this as my job. Frank, I think it was after my third year of hitting a buck 90. Um, that came to be, I mean, I remember, and I've, I spoke with Derek about this in the past, a couple of years ago, I remember sitting there in, um, one of the backfields in Jupiter during spring training and La Russa would come and speak to the group. And, um, I was sitting there as a player listening to him speak and, and I was taking it in as more as a, as a coach than a player. I wasn't looking to apply it as a player as much as man. Some of the things that are coming out of his mouth are, are meaningful. And I want to make sure that I can carry that on at some point. Um, for this organization on the other side of the fence. Um, and that's when I realized that truly uh, my passion lied in more in influencing um, the people around me and not so much uh, playing. I've never got a niche to play again once I, once I hung it up. Um, I was pretty convinced that this is something I, I definitely wanted to do. Thank you. Katie yep. Wu with The Athletic. I have a couple of questions. I'll direct the first two to you, if that's all right. Katie, we missed you there at the beginning. What was that? Um, I just, uh, congratulations. I do have a couple of questions, both for Ollie and for Mo, if that's all right. Okay. Okay. 
Um, Ollie, I'll, I'll just start with you again. Congratulations. And, you know, 2022 has long been estimated as the Cardinals' biggest window of contention. There's a lot of challenges that come with being a first year major league manager. How do you expect to temper those while meeting the lofty expectations set for this organization next year? Yeah, great question. And it's a real one. Um, I, I've always been very intentional about surrounding myself with people that will mitigate as much of that risk as possible. That goes for one, the front office and the people that have invested in me. Um, and uh, the staff that we have um, are great at what they do. Um, my job is to tap into as many of those resources as possible. As possible, and, and the reality is, will mistakes be made? Absolutely. Um, but finding solutions in real time and uh, and patching it is is part of the gig. So, um, as far as first year manager, it comes with its challenges. I'm looking forward to it. I'll be intentional about getting ahead of the curve. Um, but uh, I'm definitely excited. And secondly, you'll be the first person of color to manage this Cardinals organization in over half a century. What does that mean to you? It's meaningful. It, it really is. Um, I mean, there's there's plenty to talk about. If you look back and just rewind to, I mean, some of the neighborhoods we lived in early on in Miami, and you look at um, these opportunities don't don't come across the table uh, to the majority of the people that um, that grew up like that and uh, for them to be able to identify and see someone of color in a posi position of leadership especially for a franchise a winning franchise uh, one with the history that the St. Louis Cardinals has is extremely meaningful um, what I would say is that hopefully they see this as an opportunity to a couple of things one if you can be intentional with how you you structure your days um, who you surround yourself with and then just what's possible when, we, when you truly dedicate yourself to your craft um, but to answer your question, it's extremely meaningful. So thank you. Thanks, Ollie. And again, congratulations. Thank you. Mo, just one question for you. While understanding that you are not going to expand further on the uh, the differences between you and or the front office and Mike Schilt, what was the the thought process in hiring Ollie, who works so closely under Schilt, and, and understanding that maybe there there might be some similarities and an overlap on how they they work. So, so overall, obviously, um, when you look at Ollie's career and his career development, there's there's a lot of connections and and you know dotted lines to a lot of the similar mentors and and so when you look at at where we are today, though, as I stated uh, when we opened this, was that that Ollie's going to have his own voice. He's going to be able to put his own fingerprints on this, and you know ultimately, you hope and, and expect that he learned. To, to do things in his own way and one that he has a lot of confidence in. And so I think the, the easiest takeaway for you might simply be to say that I think Ollie learned a lot, he saw a lot, and now he has an opportunity to grow from that. Thank you. Ben Fredrickson, St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Hey, Ollie, congrats. Um, I'm curious uh, you know, how you've seen the role of manager change um, since the days that you were, were playing for managers and started your path to become a manager um, and, and how you kind of view the role of the modern manager. You touched on it a little bit as kind of where, where how has it changed in your time in baseball and, and where it is now? Yeah, I appreciate the question. I think at times there's a, there's a misunderstanding as to kind of the newer managers or you read about what that looks like when it comes to just just saying yes to the front office or it, it's a matter of being collaborative with the resources that are at hand it's a matter of being collaborative with the departments that are continuing to grow within each organization i mean when you look at what that could look like if there's true synergy between the front office the baseball development department and your on-field staff there's an opportunity to do a couple things it's it's being able to understand why you're acquiring certain players, how to best use those players, whether that's starting rotation, bullpen, platoon guy, lineup construction. There's just so many different facets to it that there can be synergy there. And then understanding as well how to implement some feedback loops to make sure that there's accountability to your decision making, right? Like there's just so much information at hand that can be used. And when you work in a collaborative manner with the front office and your analytics department, it allows you to get feedback on are the decisions you're making sustainable over 162? 
Um, what decisions are you making that are? What decisions are you making that aren't? Um, so it, it's more of a, a collaborative mindset uh, to answer your question with how um, managers are operating today opposed to 10, 15 years ago. Enrique Rojas, ESPN Deportes. Saludos, Oliver. Muchísimas felicidades. Quiero que me diga lo que significa para ti como un dominicano seguir el legado de Felipe Alou, Tony Peña, Manny Atta y los otros. Y lo que significa ser el manager de una de las organizaciones más prestigiosas del deporte de Estados Unidos. No, gracias, Enrique. ¿Cómo está? Bien. Todo muy bien. Perfecto, perfecto. En lo que estamos hablando aquí, me acaban de mandar un mensaje Luis Roja y lo mencionaste ahí porque para mí, eh, como uno se lleva, es bien importante. Y esta oportunidad de ser latino y ser uno de los líderes eh, para una, una organización que tiene la historia tan, tan importante, eh, es increíble. Eh, ojalá le dé eh, la posibilidad de otro latino eh, ver lo que está pasando aquí y que le dé confianza que es posible eh, cuando ellos se dedican a, a lo que tienen que hacer eh, esto es una posibilidad una posibilidad que estoy bien orgulloso para mí y la familia, so, gracias tú sabes que tú y yo hemos hablado mucho de eso de, tu, de tus raíces y de que viviste incluso parte de tu vida en República Dominicana pero cuando se hizo el anuncio Mucha gente dijo, Oliver, what? Oliver, ¿quién? ¿Cómo te sientes que tú llegas a este cargo tan grande y todavía tú no eres muy conocido en República Dominicana? Es algo que de verdad no, no lo he pensado mucho. Eh, para mí no es crear un nombre para, para mí o mi familia o el apellido. Para mí es hacer un trabajo tremendo para la organización. Eh, si al final de todo esto ganamos campeonato y nadie sabe el nombre mío, It's okay, baby. Yeah. Felicidades. Gracias. They're cool. St. Louis Post Dispatch. Congratulations, Ollie. Uh, as <laughs> we've, we've talked a lot through the years, um, but Mo touched on it there right in the beginning about how sudden this was and even, you know, probably was for the coaching staff to start the year one way and then suddenly have the position of manager open. I wondered if you could speak to a little bit about what that was like for you, but also how that informs maybe the previous 24 hours or your first week in the business or in this role as you kind of take a clubhouse that might have gone through a shock at the end of the season and bring it back together for next season. Yeah, it's going to be really important how um, this next week, just the, the overall communication with the staff, the players, um, I've started some of that. Um, to make sure that we are, we're gaining ground in the direction that we want to go. Um, but yeah, to your point, it, it's something that, that took certain people by shock. And um, at the end of the day, the reality, there is, is a lot of this usually ends in divorce, right? Like it, it's part of the gig, it's part of the industry. There'll be a day where, where it's my turn, you know? Um, that's just how this works. Um, so shocking, yes, I've had conversations with, with Mike and everybody and um, we're in a good spot. Um, that, that's the best way I can answer that. But uh, as far as moving this forward to your point, it's gonna be very important. It's gonna be very important just overall communication and get everybody on the same page, which um, I don't think will be difficult at all. Mo, Mo, I wanted to ask you a quick question if that's permitted, is that right? Sure. Okay. When, given the way that, that that the, that the move happened. Um, how much did you think about and kind of weigh the idea of bringing somebody from the outside in with a new voice versus staying internally, prioritizing the continuity we've talked a lot about, but also kind of capitalizing on the momentum you had. Could you walk us through how much you looked outside the organization and then went in the direction of, of Ali and staying true within? Right, obviously we know the outcome. We stayed internal. Um, as, as all this was going down, we definitely looked at potential outside candidates, but ultimately our, our comfort, comfort level of keeping that continuity and, and really building on what we have going. Um, you know, when I spent some time talking to players, 
other staff members. I, I mean, net net, we felt like we were in a really good place directionally where we were headed. And so we felt Ollie could, could really be that uh, seamless transition to where we're trying to get to. Did you, did you see at all the importance too of maybe having a unifier or somebody you knew who had already kind of thrived in that role coming out of this? Again, I'd, like when you say unifier, I, I'm not exactly sure that is exactly what we had to have, but having someone that, that understood a lot of what was happening downstairs, um, I think will obviously help with that transition. And from a leadership standpoint, I think Ollie's the right man for the job at this time. Randy Carricker, ESPN 101, St. Louis. Uh, Ali, congratulations. Uh, you're going to be managing a couple of guys that were playing in the majors before you were even drafted. Uh, how do you go about that? Mo just talked about leadership. How do you go about leading guys like Wayno and Yadi Molina? Great question. Um, and the way I look at that, I've never thought of my, my age as something that has an impact one way or another, positive or negative. I think when, when it comes down to leadership and just overall, um, having the respect of that clubhouse, a, a couple things come to mind. Um, and, and for me, that's if the player knows that you care, if the player knows that you're prepared and you have your thoughts organized when you approach them and you can make them better, they listen to you. Um, and on the other hand, if, if you're not prepared, if they know you don't care and they're, you're more worried about yourself than them um, and you can't get them better, they don't listen to you. So for me, age is an, an impediment there. It's just a matter of preparation, organization, and making sure that you're intentional, that every time you have a conversation with one of them, that you know exactly how you want them to experience that conversation and walk out of the room knowing. If you do that well, you earn their respect. And uh, it takes a while to earn that, it, and you can lose it pretty quickly. Um, so leadership for me is more about the intentionality behind that more than just the age. Yeah. Okay, great, thanks. And Mo, one quick one for you. Uh, Dave Roberts mentioned last week when the Dodgers were going to start an opener, he said, hey, I, I have one vote here. Can you talk, uh, Mo, to uh, the level of autonomy that you want your manager to have and uh, about the collaboration that uh, on a daily basis, putting together lineups and determining at two o'clock what will happen in the seventh inning, things like that? Well, I think we'll keep doing it the way we always have. We've given the manager a lot of autonomy on how he thinks about lineups, how he thinks about using his pitching staff. But to, to echo what Ollie said, I mean, there is a level of collaboration with what you have going on upstairs. I mean, when you think about analytics and, and you hear things like the performance department or, or baseball dev, these are all groups that are looking at, at data to help make your, the best decisions possible. So, you know, having Ollie be working with that, having his coaching staff work with that is something that we want to continue. But, you know, ultimately, we're hiring him to be the manager. And so he will be given some autonomy. Jordan Cohen, Associated Press. Hey, Ali, uh, congratulations again. Um, I was wondering if you could speak to, after what happened with Mike, I mean, obviously, these jobs are very precious and difficult to get. But after what happened with Mike, did you have some questions that you needed answered when you started talking to uh, Mo and um everybody within the organization uh, about the job? Um, we had some really good conversations right after. Um, and it was more so what the organization was looking for out of this position. Um, there was clarity to it um, in the way it was described to me by um, Mr. DeWitt, by Mo, by Gersh. And um, after our conversation, our initial conversation, there was very little questions I had as to how to execute my job and what they actually wanted. So. Uh, uh, I would say there was complete clarity to that once we got on the phone. Thanks. Absolutely. Benjamin Hockman, St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Hey, congrats, Ali. Uh, wanted to ask the idea of, of field managing, in-game managing. How much can you describe the role of the analytics in decisions you make at the snap of a fingers compared to the decisions you make with analytics with uh, who should play left field who should come out of the pen, things like that. Yeah, sure. I mean, there's there's a preparation that goes into it. So when you say like in the in the moment, I think those are still um, prepared 
prior to the game starting for what situations may present themselves and then how to go ahead and make the right decision once they do. Um, when it comes to the line of construction and things of that nature, I think there's there's enough information out there for us to be able to optimize our lineup. Sure, there's certain guys that um, prefer to hit somewhere in the order, but the, the majority of them, um, when you look at it, there's an opportunity to optimize the lineup on a daily basis. Um, will there be continuity? To it? Yes, um, but when I say optimize, depending on who we're facing, um, it could look different on a daily basis. Um, that's just part of, of the gig. Um, when it comes to in-game decisions, they're just, I mean, you can get as detailed as you want, uh, Ben, when it comes to starting the run at 3-2 count. I mean, what, what are the odds of actually strike him out, throw him out, compared to him putting it in play, depending on who you're facing? There, there's just so many things that you can look at to just make sure that you are making those small, tiny decisions that may look like they aren't meaningful uh, at the end of nine innings, at the end of 162 games, they, they matter. Um, so those are just examples of some that will prepare ahead of time. Um, and then some that have more to do with line of construction and bullpen usage. And a, thank you. And a quick follow-up, Ali, is, is similar to uh, piggybacking off Katie Wu's question about the importantness, that's not a word I just made up, the importantness of the 2022 season. Can you just describe I mean, if you guys make the playoffs, if any, many other teams make the playoffs and lose in the first round, they're like, ah, oh, well, they made the playoffs. But with the St. Louis Cardinals, the way things are going, to me at least, it seems like you got to gotta make a run. Can you describe the, the, uh, the, the fire that is, is that scenario? Absolutely. Um, the expectations for the organization has always been the same to win a World Series. Um, Losing in the wild card game or losing in the NLCS is no different. Sure, you have a little bit more pride and we made it further, but at the end of the day, a championship is the goal and anything less than that is a disappointment. This year in 2022 is no different. Um, we will prepare in a way to take our shot at a championship um, and anything less than that will be a disappointment. Thank you and congrats on the job. Yeah, thank you. Brooke Grimsley, KMOV TV, St. Louis. Congratulations, Ollie. I know that you said that your age is something that you not you don't really think about, but do you also see it as an advantage that you are so close in age and even some in some ways younger than some of the players? Do you see this as an advantage for you um, when it comes to really connecting with the players? Um, no, I, I, I don't. And I, I wish I said, yeah, it's a huge advantage. I, I think I, you can be 35, you can be 75, it doesn't, like your ability and your skill set to connect with the player is like the age doesn't, doesn't play a role in it, in my opinion. I think how intentional you are with the conversations that you have with your staff and your players is what gains you that respect um, and that trust. So for me, is being closer in age to a lot of the players an advantage? I, I don't see it one way or another. I think... Um, what's going to allow me to have success with our players and our staff is, is just gaining their respect through how I communicate with them. Thank you. And Mosellog, if I could just ask you a quick question. Uh, I know that you said that this kind of came quickly, but you did do you know a thorough interview process. Was there a defining moment with Ollie when it came to, this is our guy, we know moving forward that this is who we're gonna go with? Like, like I stated, um... In the release, I really felt like Ollie was going to be a major league manager at some point. I did not think it was necessarily going to be 2022. But so I, you know, when you look at, at how he was developing, growing, and really being groomed ultimately to, to be a big league manager, I knew his day would come. Um, so here we are. But, you know, in terms of, of looking at it relative to what was outside the organization too, it really just came down to our internal comfort level and knowing that um, now that his time has come, he's ready for it. So we're excited about him having this opportunity. Thank you. Rick Hummel, St. Louis Post-Dispatch. I have two, one for Ali, one for Mo. Uh, first, Ali, hats off to you. Um, Thank you. How often when you and Schulte discuss strategy, did he go ahead and use something that you had in mind rather than something that he had in mind initially himself? 
Gosh, when, when you talk about a nine inning game, it's just a, a three hour conversation and, and it's, it's constant. It has to be someone that you absolutely trust, that you are okay disagreeing with um, and moving on. And that's, that's the relationship that we had as far as how often he used some of the things that I would suggest. Um, it was 50-50. I mean, sometimes I would suggest something he would think I'm crazy and there's times where he would, wouldn't think I'm crazy, you know? So it's just, um, it's a constant conversation. And part of the gig as a bench coach is just posing an argument for another option. Um, sometimes you post something just to make sure that you're not missing it, right? And um, that, that'd be the case often. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's hard to put a number on or a percentage on if you would use my information next amount of time. It's just, it was just a constant conversation throughout the course of the game. Thank you. And Mo, how soon will it be before you have your coaching staff finalized? So that's something that uh, Ollie and the rest of us are working through right now. Obviously, we're going to have to um, replace Ollie's position as bench coach so that there are some internal candidates that have shown interest in that. And there are some external candidates that um, have shown interest as well. So, you know, ultimately, it will take the next week or so to work through all of this. And uh, hopefully by the time we get to the end of the World Series, we'll have everything in place. Thank you. Thank you. Jeff Jones, Belleville News Democrat. Ali, congratulations. Uh, to, to Commission's point there, I guess, a little bit into some of what, what Mo was speaking of as well. What will you look for in terms of staff collaboration and, and the way that you sort of want to work with the folks that obviously you've been on the staff with for a long time and that you know well, as well as maybe sort of possibly bringing folks in from the outside? How, how, do, you, how do you view that as, as part of your role here? Jeff, appreciate the question. Um, we're excited about our staff. Uh, we're excited about them uh, coming back. Um, our staff has done a, an unbelievable job over the years, our, our corner guys as far as first and third, and just the way um, the detail that's that's been behind our base running and our defense. Um, I'm excited about the staff coming back. To, to most point, we will have to replace my position in the bench coach, and we'll look at internal candidates for that, as well as some people from the outside and, and make the right decision to move this in the direction that we need to. Um, but as far as staff goes, we, uh, I'm excited about the job that the staff has done over the last few years here. And then, Mo, you mentioned that you didn't expect to be making this announcement. You didn't expect to be making a change this offseason. Did the fact that you knew you had Ollie as an option push that in a given direction? Was, were, were you looking at that decision in, in point in terms of if we make this decision – we can transition to Ollie and it will be seamless and kind of continue the way we want to go? I'd have to say yes. Um, obviously, that was not um, what was driving us to make this decision in terms of, of, of the change in, in manager. But knowing that that Ollie was an internal candidate did give you some level of confidence that you could move forward without taking a step backwards. So yes. Manuel Gomez. Congratulations, Ali, on on, uh, on your promotion. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to ask a two-part question. Um, describe how you felt when you learned that you were getting this job and uh, who was the first person you told? It was uh, mixed emotions. Um, as a lot of people on this call know, I, I was close with Mike. Uh, so there's mixed emotion, emotions of receiving the job um, and what would need to happen or what took place for, for that to, to be real. Um, so there's mixed emotions there for sure. Um, to answer your second question, the first person I told was, was my wife. Um, we, we talked through that and the opportunity and we were excited about it. Um, but overall, mixed emotions, it was good to be able to uh, once everything got cleared up and, and we came to terms to, to have that conversation with, uh, with Mike and uh, received his support for moving this organization forward. And, uh, but uh, yeah, we're excited. Martin Kilcoin, KTBI, St. Louis. Hey, uh, this question is for Mo. Mo, based on everything you said about how it came up quickly, is it fair to say when you got on the plane in L.A., headed back to St. Louis, you were not planning on a managerial change? Uh, if you're trying to recreate a timeline, I would say that's true. Yes. Okay. You're, you're then, accurate. Okay. And then what what would you say about the narrative, the, you know, how it's 
the front office calls all the shots or the evolution of the baseball manager. What do you think is accurate there? And is some of that misstated? I think that's being unfairly mischaracterized for sure. I feel like, um, you know, when you look at our front office, do we try to be progressive? Yes. Do we try to use current tools that are available to make our decisions? Yes. Um, but I also feel, and, and I think Ollie could attest to this, that we do give the clubhouse some autonomy in, in how they think about decisions and, and, and ultimately how they make decisions. So I think that narrative that we've been reading a lot about or hearing a lot about is not accurate. Again, I know that we've been a little vague on, on the details of this, but as I stated uh, earlier, this is really about Ollie. I, th I think this is uh, an exciting day for the Cardinals, and uh, I really want to embrace that moment. And a question for Bill. Bill, just give us your take early on with Ollie, how you've seen him sort of grow up in the organization. Hold on, Bill. I'm going to unmute you here. I think we're muted. Okay. Uh, there we yeah, go. What I, what I said was uh, it was very impressive. You know, he transitioned at a young age um, into – coaching and managing and became a bench coach at a very young age. So, you know, it was clear he had the talent and, uh, you know, the baseball knowledge to, to move him up the line that quickly. I mean, he was a very young bench coach. Uh, he's become, you know, a very young manager, but, you know, as I've often said, I, I rather have talent than experience. And, um, you know, he fit that bill. He fortunately had experience. I mean, he, paid his dues along the way. And, you know, when he got to the big league level as a coach, you know, he, he kept getting picked for better opportunities and he was a young bench coach and did a great job. And, you know, he's got such a great knowledge of the game. He's, he's got good relationships with, you know, all of the players and staff and, you know, it, it, he's been, you know, an impressive talent coming through the system. So, he was always on the radar, you know, or I shouldn't say always, but the last number of years been on the radar as a managerial uh, candidate. Zach Silver, MLB.com. Hey, Ali, congrats on the, the new role. Um, you know, obviously the baseball thing kind of comes as the year goes, but one thing I'm curious about is how do you describe just your interpersonal skills of working with players, working with coaches? Where do you feel like that's kind of developed along this, this path you've taken? And and where do you sort of think those those wisdom and, and that that aspect of your path and your, just your, your role now is kind of taken from over the past years? I, I honestly think that's one of the most important parts of the of the job um, is being able to communicate clearly to not only your staff and the players, but the front office and, and all the other departments, I think. Uh, with as much as we have as far as resources with with the growing departments, you, your ability to communicate clearly um, is key. Um, and it's something I, I pride myself in and being able to um, be a good listener, be observant, um, actually hear what people are saying in, in order to fulfill what, what they're asking um, and being able to hear what the players want as well. Um, there's a, this gig involves a lot of tough conversations. It just does uh, with staff, with players. Um, and your ability to do that in a way where it's not personal, where you're actually um, looking at it from the standpoint of like, what is possible for you if, if we get this right um, is the key to this. So when you ask about just overall communication skills, that's something that uh, I, I'm looking forward to, to doing well. Is there, I guess, a way where, I mean, maybe you've done this a little bit over the past several years, but knowing when a player needs a, needs a conversation, knowing when it's time to step away, I guess, how have you sort of seen that aspect of what this job is going to entail and how have you sort of learned from that over the past several years? Yeah. And, and, and that's just having a feel for, for the people that, that you're around. Um, there's certain times where, where people need that tough conversation. There's time where they need a little bit of encouragement. Um, and when you get that wrong, that's where there's a rub, right? So like your ability to know uh, when a player needs that, when they don't need it, when they need to be left alone um, is extremely important. Uh, that goes for staff as well. Um, but uh, is definitely, in my opinion, one of the most important parts of, of the job is being able to have a conversation with the people around you, disagree, but still move the mission forward. Thanks. Congrats again. Appreciate it. Thank you.
Benjamin Schaefer, KMOV TV, St. Louis. Hey, Ali, congratulations. Uh, you mentioned having that conversation with Schulte and having his support on a personal level. Just what does that mean for you as you embark upon this new challenge and this new role? Uh, it was important. Um, you prepare yourself and you're intentional about um, how you structure everything in a way to be equipped to, to be in the seat at some point. Um, so to, to get here um, was exciting. Uh, to be able to have a conversation and receive that support um, was meaningful uh, because it just gives you that piece of, you know what, it's, it's time and we're gonna go ahead and, and do this well. Um, so to answer your question, it was an important conversation for me and I'm glad I had it and I have the support and uh, I'm looking forward to moving this thing forward. And then I'm curious too, in whatever conversations you've had so far with players, what's been their reaction and their excitement for you in this opportunity? Yeah, I've, I've talked to some of our core guys. Um, I, I've had a conversation with Yachty. Um, I've talked to Wayno and Goldie and Nolan and, um, the support has been good. I'm looking forward to, uh, to being able to lead those guys and, and and come alongside them and allow them to to reach all the rest of the goals that they have in mind for their careers and, and for this organization uh, collectively. So it'll be a great challenge that I'm looking forward to. But the overall support has been uh, has been great. Thanks, Ali. Congrats again. Appreciate it. Thank you, Ryan Walton. Congratulations, Ali. Thank you. Just a question for Mo. Mo, you and Mr. DeWitt have been consistent talking about the importance of the organizational philosophy to develop within and the continuity. We've seen the last couple of bench coaches obviously be promoted upward. As you're looking at the, the new bench coach, how do you weigh the importance of maintaining that continuity with the opportunity to bring in um, uh, another voice from the outside? Well, I think it's a fair question, Brian, and one I don't know if we have the exact answer to yet. Um, obviously, Having that continuity is, is, is a nice asset when you're thinking about um, growth opportunities for people internally, but there is the, the value of having somebody come in with an outside voice that might be able to really improve upon our product, if you will. And so I think that's just something that, that Ollie and, and the rest of the group, we just need to, to work through. Obviously we do feel we have some internal candidates that would, would make quality bench coaches but ultimately we just got to decide what makes the most sense for us as we start to think about 2022. Thank you. Thank you. One quick question for Ollie too, please. Ollie, you mentioned Gary LaRock and uh, Mike Schilt and Mark Dijon as your influences, your mentors coming up. Now that you'll be a major league manager, uh, will whom, whom will you rely on for advice? Um, I think the three you just mentioned will always be resources to me. Um, I have other people outside of the game um, from a leadership standpoint that have played a big role in, in, in me being able to do what I've done up to this point that I'll continue to rely on. Um, so uh, between, between those, um, I feel really confident in being able to continue to develop as a leader and just uh, being held accountable to uh, the responsibilities that come with, with this gig. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay, we'll take a couple more here. We're coming up on about 45 minutes. Um, Brandon Kiley, ESPN 101 St. Louis. Yeah, this one's for Ollie. Uh, just a quick question. Can you describe what your relationship is like with Jeff Albert and how long that relationship goes back? Absolutely, Brandon. Um, gosh, I've known Jeff for a long time now. Uh, me and Jeff are, are good friends. He was uh, when he was with the Cardinals, I believe in 08, we were together. Uh, both of us lived in, in Jupiter during the off season and spent a lot of time together. Our family spent a lot of time together. Uh, even when he was with Houston, we spent a good bit of time together in, in Jupiter. Um, I've recently moved up north a little bit and, and he's done the same. But as far as knowing each other, it, it's, it's, been, it's been a while. Um, my relationship with Jeff is, is a good one. Um, and I'm looking forward to continuing to collaborate with him as well. As a quick follow-up, how would you say your hitting philosophies align? Yeah, great question. Um, I think if you just look at the game and, and where the game's headed and you look at the teams that are in the playoffs and what they do well, um, it's, it's been stated quite a bit throughout the year what that philosophy is. I mean, you have to drive baseball, you got to walk, you got to be able to do those things. Um, holistically, I think being well-rounded is, is also part of this, but as far as do my views align with Jeff's to answer your question? Yes, they do. Um, 
there's some things with regarding messaging that we'll improve upon in order to get our players to do what he's wanting them to do and what they need to do in order to have success. But overall, um, a simple answer would be our philosophy is aligned. Ben Fredrickson, St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Hey, Mo, I was hoping to ask you about kind of some of the things that you said are, you know, maybe getting warped about the role of the manager in the modern times. I guess the traditional sense has been the front office manages the roster, you know, the manager manages the games. Um, and maybe that's maybe that's an outdated way of phrasing it. I'm, is the better way to say it, the conversation is is includes all pregame and then once the game starts the game's in the manager's hands and it's discussed afterwards or, or kind of what is the proper way to view it if the if the view is outdated yeah so I, I don't think like our front office is overly active with how you're thinking about like pregame preparation or or even like what ollie was trying to articulate is is when when you start the game there's almost like a script on how you want to think about following it you know who's available, who isn't, you know, in certain scenarios, if you're winning, who you're going to use versus who you're, if you're losing. And all that we try to do from the front office standpoint is give these guys the tools in the toolbox to help make the best decisions. Um, you know, if, if they want to have like an open discussion on, on how we think about bullpen usage or starting pitcher usage, you know, we certainly will welcome that, but we're not like running downstairs and, and I'm not throwing a piece of paper on his desk saying like, this is who you're going to put in the lineup today. This is what your order is going to be. And this is who you're going to close the game with tonight. Like that just doesn't happen. This is much more organic. We want, we just want to give our major league staff resources that allow them to make the best decisions possible. And obviously from a analytical standpoint, we have the horsepower up here to help them do that. And, you know, obviously, as, as Ali has stated, we want it to be a collaborative environment. We want it to be one that uh, is a two-way street and one that we can have just open conversations on this. And, and that's what we're going to welcome. And, you know, candidly, we, we've had that in a lot of ways. So, you know, not a lot's changing there. It's, it's ultimately going to be just, um, you know, giving them the tools to make the best decisions. Thanks. Benjamin Hockman, St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Uh, Ali, I wanted to ask you this real quick. Uh, we, we know about your relationship with many of the Cardinal mentors and uh, Okendo and Dijon and the people you've mentioned. May I ask, who are some of your baseball mentors uh, from before entering uh, pro ball? Man, that's a good question. Um, a couple people come to mind that that helped in my development uh, early on. Uh, John Pulaski is one of them who was at the College of Charleston during, during my time there. Matt Heath is another one. Um, Chris Morris. I mean, there, there's there's a list of people that poured into me um, early on. Um, and, and one of the most meaningful ones was Scott Foxhall as well. Um, so th these are some of the names that have that have been influential in getting me to pro ball and, and showing me kind of what it looked like to be able to sustain a career there um, and how to carry myself um, that aren't part of the, the Cardinal organization. Thanks. 